Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us today on relatively short no notice. You know, this is a, a moment in time that um, I never expected to have in my tenure as mayor of Davenport. Um, the incidents of violence this past, week past weekend in Davenport were truly horrific. A 16-year-old male juvenile was shot in broad daylight on a Davenport street Let's, uh, take a and dropped off at a local hospital like he was nothing. Nothing. You know, when you think about that, when any 16-year-old dies, it should mean something. It should hurt all of us in the heart. But this is the anatomy of juvenile crime in Davenport at this moment. Let me be clear, this was not a random act of violence. This is a criminal sub subculture with no regard for human life. That's plain and simple. The line is blurred between suspect and victim. Let me say that again. There is a blurred line between the suspects and the victims. And it must end. Law, enfor law enforcement is relentless and is uh, pursuing the perpetrators in these incidents. And rest assured, there will be arrests. And in many cases, there have been arrests. The problem is twofold. Many young people need an intervention connected to resources that they need. And other habitually criminal-minded juvenile offenders need to be taken off the street. But law enforcement cannot do this alone. This is a community problem, and we cannot arrest our way out of it. All of us need to do our part. You have heard this many times before, but I must say this again today. If you are leaving your keys in your unlocked car and your car is stolen, you are part of the problem. Vehicles are being stolen and utilized in these types of crimes and it must end. Lock it up is not just a phrase, it's a rallying cry. You must do your part and do it today. Over the past few months, we have been working with many groups and agencies on a plan to combat this growing juvenile crime problem. Clergy, school officials, juvenile court representatives, police officers, city officials, families, service providers, and many others have come together to discuss dealing with current perpetrators and to strategize how to prevent children from entering into these violent criminal activities. Today, I am announcing an upcoming summit that will bring all of these groups together along with you, our community, to work on a longer-term solution to this ever-growing problem. We will tap tackle the topics of Juvenile Assessment Center, legislative and judici judicial decisions, schools and education, poverty, community outreach, and involvement, to name a few. It's all of those aspects that are part of this challenge and we must all come together. We've been starting to meet on these, and we need to now accelerate that effort. The challenge is not going away. The needs of juveniles in our community are significant. All juveniles in our community, they're all being faced by a variety of challenges. And some are acting out because of their inability or lack of support to deal with them. We cannot do this alone. We must work together, law enforcement, is proactively and diligently working on the intermediate and immediate issues. And we must, as a community, as a strong community, join the effort. I am asking for your help. First, lock up your vehicles and your valuables. Don't be part of the problem. You can be part of a solution. And I know that sounds simple, but it is truly integral part of the challenges that we are facing. Also. We want you to join the community effort to help our youth. We can't do it alone. The police department can't do it alone. The city can't do it alone. This has to be a community initiative of all of us coming together. All of us participate in this summit that will be upcoming, that will be communicating to you. And we look forward to having you join us. With that, I'm going to open it up if there's any questions. There's others here we can help with some other questions you may have. But again, I think it's important to understand that as this gentleman over here is on the, he's uh, making some calls here, everybody can hear okay, I hope. Uh, but if the question being here is all of you understand this is something that we know is really important. And it struck us deeply, and this weekend was an example that really 
may have been, as they say, the straw that broke the camel's back. We have to, in fact, act. And we're looking to come together as a community and make sure we make a difference. So with that in mind, are there any questions anybody may have? Yes, sir. details on this, Mayor, and all the time and place, the The summit, the summit, not yet. We're looking at over the next couple of weeks of getting it set up. <clears throat> we are reacting to this. Obviously, we've had these activities go on going, but it's now a matter of to take it to the next level. We're working with city staff and my council colleagues to make sure that happens. We should have something set up. We're hoping by in June at the latest and try to do this quickly as we can. Let's be open to the public. Back to you. Yeah, we want the we want the community involved. There'll be different groups, targeted groups that'll be involved. But again, ultimately, we can't solve this without the community's involvement. We want them to participate as well. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. You said you can't arrest your way out of this. Can you elaborate more on why not more arrests, why not more policing? Well, I, the question I'll make, I'm going to turn it over to the chief, maybe to give us more details. But all the crimes that you've heard, all the issues, all the perpetrators are being arrested. That's not stopping the problem. It's really, as we said, reactionary and not proactive. So that's the issue. We are in the process now uh, through our police and fire operational study. We've identified additional resources. I've sworn in a number of officers over the last few months. There's also more being planned. So we're going to do those things, and we're going to stay proactively involved dealing with the crimes as they happen. happen. But our real challenge is to prevent them from happening in the first place. Yeah, that's, that's all more about this. This is what the summit is all about. We've been meeting with those individuals already, representatives of different whether behavioral health, whether they be all, the, like I said, the clergy, the not-for-profits, the other social service agencies, the courts, uh, the, again, juvenile court as well, uh, human resources, all of those groups coming together, and that's going to be part of the plan. Any other questions? James? Yeah, is this kind of a precursor to what eventually may be the Juvenile Assessment Center? Is this sort of a, a Band-Aid until we get that up and running and going? Well, I don't think this is not definitely a Band-Aid. I think this is a matter of putting the process together to move towards a better way to bring all the community together. The Juvenile Assessment Center had two basic aspects. One, working with young people that we said here who were habitual juvenile offenders and working with them and making, giving, working out for them and trying to help them, but at the same time preventing a family-centered base of support that everybody can take advantage of. So there's two parts of that. And this is the first steps of moving more proactively, community-wide, towards it. All the initiatives have been happening. Now it's a matter of making a more uh, organized in future of bringing everybody together. Any other questions? Chief, you want to add any uh, things about this week or this past weekend and maybe some of the issues? I know we've had, we talked about the importance of the, or the challenge of the car thefts. Um, and we've had a couple of instances, I think many of them were tied to that this weekend. Maybe a little bit of information. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, uh, the one thing I wanted to point out is, <clears throat> so the mayor talked about um, us working both right now and in those immediate uh, situations where law enforcement is going to be critical. Uh, we will continue to do that. Um, we have uh, a lot of patrol officers that are uh, working on the street every day, every shift. And our investigators, <clears throat> as we speak right now, are, are working on incidents that happened over the weekend and over the past several weeks. Um, one of the things I did want to point out, you know, we talked about um, arrests and those kind of things. And the mayor talked about we won't arrest our way out of this. So, you know, uh, our, our agency alone arrested seven juveniles just over the, over the weekend for vehicle thefts. Over the last year, we've arrested more than 50. Um, do you still hear, are you still reporting on vehicle thefts seemingly every day in the Quad Cities? Absolutely. Um, so we, as law enforcement, will continue to work on those things when they happen in our community. Uh, we're, we're not going to let up on that. The summit is really, is really looking at, we have to look at the root causes of what's going on and why it's, why it's going on. It's a time for us to get stakeholders from all different avenues, all different expertises, uh, together, as well as community members, to really, you know, take a look at this and, and how do we get to the root of the problem. We've talked previously about uh, the concept of a juvenile assessment center. Certainly that may be part of what comes up uh, from this summit. I hope those discussions come up in the summit. Um, but it's, it's much bigger than just going out and trying to arrest the bad people. That's certainly something that we're charged with and we're going to continue to do that. 
the summit's much bigger. The other thing I wanted to add too was, um, you know, I think it's I think it's critical for uh, our community members to understand um, how important it is to be safe with their firearms. Uh, we have had 73 guns stolen uh, in this city over the, just this year, in 2018. That includes both residential thefts and out of vehicles. So that's a lot of firearms that are getting onto our streets that don't need to be there in the hands of people that, that uh, we should not uh, consider as responsible um, gun owners or people that are responsible with firearms. Um, we've made 79 uh, arrests, uh, weapons arrests since the beginning of the year as well. And that's a lot. And that just confirms the fact that we are working very diligently and very hard on this, on this issue. But it also uh, confirms that we need to look at it in a much bigger perspective. We need to look at the big root problems. And as a community, uh, the mayor talked about having the various different experts involved in this and our community members. Um, and, and that's really what we need to have happen. Thank you, Chief. And I want to reiterate again, uh, we have an outstanding accredited department that does, they are pushing themselves long hours and effectively dealing the, with the immediacy of these challenges. And I'm proud of every one of them and proud of the entire team and the, higher, the, higher, the entire department. You've been working very hard and we respect that and your results are proven. It's got to take more than that. And that's what, if you'll notice on our goals of the city, Public safety is one of the major goals. And you've heard that discussion, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results isn't gonna work. We know we have to take a bold move, and that's what this is about. We need to have, in fact, this summit is gonna be that opportunity. People in many instances ask all of us as elected officials, well, what are you gonna do about this? My question is, what do you want us to do about this? That's the summit. Because, in, fa in fact, we're talking about here, everybody who commits a crime is being arrested. There's more to it than that, and we need a community effort to do it. Yes, ma'am. Can you provide any examples of other cities you're looking to or coordinating with for examples of good proactive investment in proactive Paul, do you want to talk a little bit about the Colorado trip? Just very briefly. Sure. So one of the things uh, that uh, us as a county are looking at is uh, the, the concept of a juvenile assessment center. And the mayor talked a little bit about that, um, but a, a group of us uh, recently went to Colorado uh, to look at a system that they have, a juvenile assessment center um, that, en that encompasses four counties in Colorado. Um, so we went, took a look at that, um, learned, learned a lot of really great things. Uh, they've, had, they've had a system in place for more than 15 years and their system has grown. They've made some uh, changes and some tweaks in the system so um, we can learn from, from some of the things that they have learned from their process as well. Um, and you know, they're at a point now where they don't know what they would do without a, a system like that. Um, it's something that, uh, like the mayor said, we've been working on this for some time. We've been working on that for over a year now. Um, I can say that, that we briefed some of our city and county leaders uh, last week on the assessment center and we're continuing to moving forward with that as well. And again, I think to reiterate the point that the Chief just made that's very important, this isn't just a City of Davenport initiative. This is a county-wide initiative, and eventually, individuals that are involved, some of these habitual criminals, uh, juvenile offenders, are not limited just to Davenport. But we know we have to do our part and bring all of our other colleagues together. We work very well together. The first step is do what we can in Scott County. And that's what we're working on now with, this, first of all, Scott County Board of Supervisors and Scott County in general. I think we had a good discussions with the city of Bettendorf, but all of us need to be involved and we need to take, uh, obviously, a very proactive step ourselves. And in fact, the summit will include all of these individuals. And all the individuals that went to Colorado are rep will be representative on the summit. So the work has begun and now we need to take it to the next level and let the citizens participate in this process as well. Any other questions? I think the question, we'll have to determine exactly the players. I would think some of the key individuals, as an example, we had in our public, I mean, our uh, police and fire operational study with the Blue Ribbon Panel, uh, the mayors of Rock Island, the mayor of Bettendorf, the county administrators, the city administrators from those other communities who were involved. We probably want to keep them apprised, um, but I think it's mostly going to be 
Davenport citizens at this point and the other participants that will be basically involved from Scott County wide. But we'll invite the others because we think it's important as one quad cities to work together. James? What made you change your mind this weekend to hold this press conference and, and have this summit? Obviously, the 16-year-old the who was shot and killed, three kids have been shot in your city in two weeks. Is, is, was just this the tipping point of that? Well, you, you said it. I mean, the fact is, one young person getting shot is too many. Uh, the issue is, we've been working on these initiatives, and I think we've heard from our citizens. Uh, there's some concern. What's happening? What's happening? Well, we have a lot going on, and we need to take a bold statement to say, we are going to make a difference. We're in the process of making a difference. These are basically, as we said before, um, the criminal and the, or the accused, as well as the, the suspect and the victim. It's a very blurred line. So these aren't randomly people driving around the community. We want to let them know that the vast majority of our citizens, again, are all safe. However, that's still one shot, one shooting is too many. So we realize we've got to tell our community we are committed to this as a council, as a city, as a police department, and I think ultimately as a county. We're committed to this, and we need to take a bold step to say, now it's time to make this even more public. We've been working on these initiatives and take a positive step forward. When you say blurred line, you mean they're coming from the, the, it's the same group of kids, for lack of a better term, shooting each other and, and shooting crimes against each other? I, I think what we're finding is, for the most part, and I'll, I'll let the chief talk specifically. They have more specific details. Maybe you answer that, chief. If you would. Um, so I, I think that the best way to explain that is that you know, there's a, there's a, a sub, subculture of criminally minded people that we have in our community. Um, and these, you know, acts of violence, uh, a, uh, a person may be a suspect one day and then a, a victim another. Um, so hopefully that answers it for you, James. Um, do we yeah. know, two questions. One, do we know if the suspects came from the and or the victim of the weekend shooting were gang affiliated, and then also what are we doing to combat teen gang violence? So I think, uh, I think one of the things that's important is I, I really can't and don't want to hinder our investigation, so I don't want to talk at all, and I really can't talk at all of specifics about the investigation from this weekend's uh, shooting. Um, I can tell you that the, the summit, um, the discussions, will probably encompass uh, uh, youth and gangs um, I know uh, our discussions on the Juvenile Assessment Center, uh, they've encompassed um, gangs and, and the involvement of, of our youth in, in gangs. So I would be surprised if it didn't in incorporate that. Do you have any kind of statistics of the rise over the past few years in Davenport? Over the past what? Over the past few years of uh, youth and gangs in, in Davenport? No, I don't have any information on that for you. I think I don't want to be get histrionic here and create words that need to be there. We mentioned earlier there's a subculture, subculture of criminally minded kids is what it is, and youth that are involved. Um, we don't put a gang label on that. These are kids that one day they're hanging out with this group, and the next day they're hanging out with another group, and that's like all teens do. Only it gets a sub this this more subculture issue gets to be violent as part of that process. So. Let's focus on all kids in our community, making sure they all have an opportunity for some hope and opportunity in the future. At the same time, those that are in that subculture group, that we deal with them and continue to make sure our citizens are safe. Yes, ma'am. This is for any one of you. Um, I'm asking on behalf of our Facebook commenters, so many of them are asking, where are the parents? What, um, how does, are you addressing parents' involvement in this or lack thereof? And is that going to be well, I think we talked about by getting churches involved, by getting not-for-profits involved, you want to invite everybody into the mix. And whether that be parents or their children or their grandparents, whatever it happens to be. So it is definitely stronger if we can get all individuals participating. That's a challenging issue. And people want to, again, I think the challenge in many cases, somebody wants to blame somebody for this. It's much more complicated than that. And we as a community have to all come together to make this change. And again, I think that the, it still comes back to make sure, and I'm going to reiterate this again, make sure that lock your car and take the keys out of it. Um, they're not breaking into cars. They're open. They're left running, sitting in a parking lot. We've got to deal with that in particular because in that sense, you are part of the problem. We've got to make sure that doesn't happen. And secondarily, we've got to deal with that intervention work as well. And that's all of us, parents, grandparents, 
and everybody's going to be involved. Teachers, the school district's been involved with us as well, all the not-for-profits, juvenile court, the court system, we all need to come together and look at some creative solution for the long-term solution of the problem. Other questions? Okay. Thank you all very much, and we'll be around for a little bit afterwards, so thank you for coming. <laughs>